All right, so Moonlight Mile by the Rolling Stones. This is from Sticky Fingers, released in 1971. And this is actually um, Mick Jagger playing the main guitar part on this. And he had put in an all-night session with Mick Taylor. And they had, you know, reworked an old sort of little demo that Keith had had um, that he'd called Japanese Thing. So I guess they, you know, got looking at that and they just sort of turned it into this song. And uh, Keith wasn't involved in the recording. He's not even on it. So it's all Mick Taylor and Mick Jagger. And then they um, put in that big string arrangement um, that was done by Paul Buckmaster, a guy that used to do a lot of stuff for Elton John. Anyways, this is just an awesome song. I've always really loved this song and thought that it was kind of uh, the most overlooked Rolling Stones ballad, you know, because I, I put it right up there with Angie and uh, Wild Horses, you know, I just think it's a really good song. Anyways, it's in open G, only it's open G with something added, all right? So you'll see a lot of guys playing it down here. And those notes, you know, those notes are all right on the money, so you can play it there if you want, but um, you know, when I started looking into doing this tutorial on this song, I found a couple of live videos of the Stones playing this, and Mick is playing it up here. And the way he's able to do that up there is he's got this uh, E string tuned up to a G, so it's the same note as the A string. And that's how he's able to play it on those lower strings. And, you know, that is the sound on the record. It's it's those, you know, the thickness of those strings. If you compare that to... You know, it's just a different sound altogether. Way, way thicker and deeper and smoother on these lower strings, okay? So that's how you do it. Tune to open G, I'll put the tuning down here and then take that low E string and tune it up to a G. And, you know, yeah, you might break your string when you do it. I really doubt it, though, because um, that low string will take quite a bit. And going up to a G, like if you went up to an A or higher, you might, might get a little hairy, but just going up to a G should be no problem. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, we're gonna start like this. Before we get going any farther, those first two cycles are the timing is really crazy. It's um it's almost like it's out of time. Okay, but we'll deal with that as we move along. So we're gonna start on the two low strings, and we're just gonna hammer 12 to 14 on the A string, and then unhammered. And then just move down a string, hammer on uh, D14 from D12. exact same thing and then we're up to um, hammering G14 from G12 with the open D string back to D14 then ended up with and you know if you try and count your way through that you're gonna get messed up so you just kind of have to memorize it let's just do it one time slow part which is exactly the same
except it ends differently. It actually, it ends like that. One, two, three, right? So. So that's your intro. And then the singing starts and the guitar is kind of, um, it's not playing that whole that whole thing. It's kind of coming in and out, right? And you got to remember, it's the Stones, right? They never do anything the same twice. So it's it's very loose the way it's all put together. Um, but on my demo, I just played that those lines all the way through it. But now I add some strumming. It's kind of a feel thing. And then, it's just that little rhythmic thing. You could do the G there, but you can go to the, you know, it's kind of, it's a mixture of strumming and notes, open strings. It's very loose. I just ended that last one with. Now the next part is going to go to the C chord, which is we're going to bar on the, all the strings on the fifth fret. And um, you know that, I find it really hard to do that with my first finger. You could, right? You put your first finger down and push down with your second finger for support. But um, after doing that a bunch, I find it really hard on this tendon in here. So what I do is I use my third finger as much as I can and I put my second finger on and I can actually, you know, like put all the pressure of my wrist down on that. So, you know, I'm changing the pressure from here kind of to more of my wrist and I just find I get better traction with on the chord that way. And we're going to go... And this is over the lines, uh, the sound of strangers sending nothing to my mind, right? Right, so it's just kind of vamping. Then open. And then we've got... All right, so that's... 2nd fret, 4th fret, and open, and we're just basically playing the first two strings, or even the first three strings, and then back up to this chord, which is now a D, back to the C. So. And then we do it again. And then we're going to be into the next section. Okay? So rather than, you know, explaining every little move, let's just play that whole bit from when we hit the C chord. So...
right, now we're into this next section, and these are all kind of like themes, you know, that they bring in over that open G. And it's going to be like this. And that's all in the D string. So on the 14th to the 12th. 7, 9, 10, ending up with, so out of this, Beautiful little part there. Um, and then Key starts singing, or sorry, Mick starts singing, um, I'm hiding sister and I'm dreaming. And in my demo, I just played that up here and I went. Okay, because I really like the sound of that. Um, almost like bluegrassy type sound, right? So... We're just going to start here, little finger, on E5. And slide that down, playing mostly just the B and the E string. to keep it on those last three strings basically but the beautiful part about open tuning is you hit any strings it doesn't matter man it's all going to sound good bring in that low string It's not hard to do, it's just, it's feel. You gotta get the feel of it. And then it repeats. And then it's a little tag. And then we're on to the next section, and that on the record, that's where Mick is doing this on an electric. And the acoustic is just kind of vamping on that G. But I added these. That's like an A minor form. And then open, and then the chord and that repeats a bunch of times and then I just took it up an octave so that's 10th um, fret D 10th fret B and 9th fret G and then just slide those two up to the 12th fret taking your first finger off Go back down. Right, get our little finger on the 12th there of the G. And then coming out of that, we're going to hit this D chord.
you know, there's not much to it, really. Um, it's just a matter of going over it and just practicing those moves, you know, making sure you're getting good contact with um, those bar chords. Okay, so let's take it from, we'll just do this last bit of this. So what we're doing there after we've coming out of that A, we're kind of you know coming halfway through the lick, right? So we just. Um, in here you know we just sort of halfway through and then I just did that little figure again and then we just go to the beginning um, My demo that's where I ended it because um, you know a lot of the song is just they're just jamming and uh, just fooling around with stuff you know but that's where I ended it so. the hardest part for me on this is those bar chords you know because you have to really push to get every note ringing and you know you're coming from this open you know where everything is so beautiful and right into that you know you got to make sure that you fret every string And that's it for this one. Um, beautiful song, you know, and I really, really like playing it on acoustic. I mean, I like the album version, but just stripped down. I think it's just so, it kind of almost brings out the pureness of the song more than all the production, for me anyways. All right, so I hope you get something out of this. I hope you enjoy playing it. Um, open tune songs are always a gas to play because they sound so good, right? <laughs> Like I always say, I hope you get something out of it.